वेलकम लेट्स स्टार्ट विद एन सी आर टी क्लास इलेवेंथ इकोनॉमिक्स द सिक्स चैप्टर दैट टॉक्स अबाउट रूरल डेवलपमेंट नाउ लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड वाई टॉकिंग अबाउट रूरल डेवलपमेंट इन इंडिया इज प्रिटी इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिया यू हैव नियरली टू थर्ड ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन दैट लिव्स इन द रूरल एरिया एंड द प्री डोमिनेंट ऑक्यूपेशन इन द रूरल एरिया बिकम्स एग्रीकल्चर सो एग्रीकल्चर एंड रूरल इंडिया इज बेसिकली इनसेपरेबल फ्रॉम द इंडियन इकोनॉमी सो वन ऑफ द मेन सब्सिस्टेंस फॉर इंडिया नाउ महात्मा गांधी हैड राइटली सेट development of village is development of nation in india so our focus on rural development and is indeed very very important now what are the factors that we look for in the development of a rural area we talk about increasing the literacy levels the education providing good health care facilities providing uh, permanent housing facilities or pakka houses to all then we talk about land reforms we talk about increasing the productivity we talk about bringing in uh, banks into rural areas the credit facility into rural areas developing the infrastructure good road so gramin sadak yojana then you have the pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin so all of those are some of the versions that are meant to uplift the rural areas now you also have programs which are related to uh, elevating poverty uplifting the weaker sections of the society and engaging the farm and the non farm activities in india now if we talk about the share of agriculture to G gdp we have seen that it has been declining over the years india is pushing up on manufacturing and service sector but still uh this sector the population that is involved with this sector does not change we have seen that the gdp ratio is declining but the population has remained constant so our aim is to increase the gdp through agriculture as one of the steps then we talk about doubling the farmers income by 2022 that could be done by bringing in allied activities or agro allied activities along with agriculture we also have issues that are being faced by rural areas which is mainly inadequate infrastructure uh, no proper roads no proper uh, internet connectivities electricity issues so all of those need to be addressed into rural areas along with it providing employment opportunities that could be through the minigra scheme that is minimum 100 days of guaranteed employment in the rural area we have the opportunities in the industrial and the service sector that could be shifted to the countryside region or the rural areas into india we can increase the possibilities of uh, casual employment so those are some of the factors that we need to really push up for the development of the rural sector now credit is one of the important sectors that we need to look on so far what was happening was uh, since the british or the colonial rule in india uh, the farmers were predominantly illiterate so they were asked to sign or put a thumb on whatsoever amount the land owner used to uh, talk about or the credit person used to talk about as a result the farmer was always in the vicious cycle of debt he could never come out of the cycle of debt so you have the issue of providing credit at a reasonable rate so again the middlemen were charging high credit rates so issue of providing farmers a credit at a reasonable rate with without or with or without a collateral was again an important issue so bringing credit facilities into rural areas was indeed important now even once the credit facility has entered into a rural area if the farmer does not have ample collaterals how will he get a credit so bank would require a kind of collateral in lieu of providing a credit so what could be the collateral then so therefore you have the small help the self help groups that came into being so you have small micro credit agencies that were established and they used to they work around with uh, having a kind of collective pool of money and a person who wants can get a collateral on the name of that self help group so that's how you have the micro credit financing units that function on and help farmers basically borrow for initial investment so farmer would definitely have to borrow something for an initial investment because it's only after that he can have seeds in the farm and can have a crop and only after he has a crop he would be able or he would be in a position to repay back the loans that he has taken so lending was a important issue at the time of independence and that was creating a kind of vicious cycle of poverty so bringing up the literacy levels so that the farmer cannot be cheated 
providing reasonable credit agencies besides money lenders or the middlemen that existed so government came up with the idea of social banking in 1969 you had nabard that was established that's the national bank for agricultural and rural development and then you had this nabard which was set up in 1982 to coordinate the rural financing so in 69 we proposed the idea of rural credit through social banking in 82 you had nabard that was established and then we had the green revolution now this green revolution brought about diversification in the farm income however this green revolution had its drawbacks as well so which we would study in the further lectures a brief idea i would give you is with the use of high yielding variety seeds and the synthetic pesticides the land degradation uh, has hastened the, or the process of land land degradation become much became much more faster as a result what happened was the soil was getting poorer in quality so what we required was uh, basically a kind of alternate uh, revolution that could take place so now we have the evergreen revolution that's up so that's a kind of uh, changes that are taking place then you have in the rural areas the rrbs or the regional rural banks you have the cooperatives and land development banks that are giving money at a cheaper rate or uh, dispensing credit at a cheaper rate we already talked about the self help groups how they work as a collateral they have a pool money and that's repayable in a small installments when installments when required kudumbashri <clears throat> is a women oriented community based poverty reduction program that was started in kerala and it was basically again a kind of credit society that was helping the poor farmers uh, come up with the objective of saving and you have this thrift and credit society which was mobilized for thrift saving so this was a kind of important achievement this was a kind of non formal bank that was there but a uh, large scale participation of women uh, participation of women and uh, um, the people in that region along with savings mobilized this program then you have rural banking as we said a uh, good banking system would have a positive impact on income employment output and there would be better services in the rural area so ultimately the infrastructure would get stronger the food security could act as buffer stocks and again you have uh, all other formal institutions which fail to develop this uh, deposit mobilization except the commercial banks in the rural areas so uh, the default rate of the loan was high so the idea was to bring down the rate for the loan in the rural areas providing cheaper loan to the farmers the next is the market system now you have the enam or the electronic national agricultural market the idea is that whole of the uh, india would have a common market place where a common procurement would be done there would be no intermediaries so <clears throat> since there are no intermediaries what would happen there would be no cheating to the farmer and the farmer would get a right price for the product that he is growing so you have uh, the idea of marketing that was not only involved at the level of final production but also at the level of storage processing transportation uh, so that basically improved the structure now what are the methods to improve the marketing uh, we can regulate the market for a kind of transparent marketing system good physical infrastructures could be provided cooperative marketing at fair prices could be done uh, minimum support price should be ensured we can maintain a buffer stock and distribute the food grains and sugar by public distribution system which we have already covered in the previous lectures so just refer the concept of public distribution uh, system in our 9th 10th ncrts it's a very very important concept uh, i won't repeat it again here the next is alternate marketing channel now in the various regions across india you have different names for the alternate marketing channels for example apni mandi in punjab haryana rajasthan hadaspur mandi in pune and so on so those are the names that you need to know about now again these fast food chains that are coming up are bringing a good thirst for the rural area a major reason for this is because in the rural area what's happening is they require a kind of desired quality of product so they provide the farmers with good seeds good inputs and a procurement with a pre decided price so this basically reduces the risk of the farmer that gives them more uh, uh, kind of sustainable income and also increases the income level of the farmers so these fast food chains which are entering in contract with the farmers are really working good for the sake of farmers 
Bringing in diversification is again very very important. As we said, if the farmer is earning only through the agricultural produce, he might not earn in that much amount. But if he has certain allied activities like animal husbandry, livestock rearing, then you have uh, making pickles out, out of the farm produce that is being made and uh, processing it. You have the Kusum scheme that's up that's really interesting. So the rural households are now asked to generate their own solar energy so that they can use in the field and the additional energy that is being created under the Kusum scheme, they can sell it to the discoms. So that's again a very, very important initiative through which you can have diversification of income for the farmers. So you have the allied activities that should be pushed up. Those include mainly the agro processing like formation of pickles. You have uh, small scale industries, leather tourism, rural tourism is another important issue that's being pushed up. So you have the uh, rural tourism that has been dis discussed in the Kurukshetra I guess in November 2018 or December 2018 edition that we have talked about. Then animal husbandry as we said India is really home to nearly 70 million small and landless laborers. Along with that we have nearly 300 million cattle, 108 million buffaloes. So you have a large number of livestock that's with us. The milk production has been increased over nearly 8 times since 1951 through the program of Operation Flood. This is similar to what brought in changes for agricultural by Green Revolution. So Operation Flood came for the milk milk industry we have better technology um, better breeds of animals so we have the Rashtriya Gokul mission so that talks about developing the indigenous breeds of the animals so all those schemes have basically led to better breeds better uh, enhancement of productivity improved veterinary care and credit facilities similarly you have the fisheries so you have the National Fishery Board now which is working for it so for, for the uh, person who is a kind of uh, fisherman talks that water is a kind of mother or divine element for the fishes and for the fishery industry to survive. So inland fish production however is nearly 64% of the value as compared to marine in, uh, sector which contributes to only 36%. So we have most of the fishes that comes from the states of West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Gujarat, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. However, it contributes to nearly only 0.8% of the total GDP. We have 60% of the workforce in export marketing and 40% in internal marketing uh, which are women. Similarly, horticulture needs to be developed. Now, some of the countries have worked really well with horticulture like Israel as one of the examples. Despite of the poor uh, landforms there and the poor physical uh, infrastructure there, you have uh, a good idea of drip irrigation. As a result, you have a good uh, boost in the horticulture production. So India can be a leader in horticulture because India is already leader in mangoes, bananas, coconuts, cashew nuts so, and some of the spices. It's second largest producers in terms of uh, fruits and vegetables. It can bring in employment opportunities for harvesting of flowers, for providing uh, hybrid seed production, for tissue culture technology, bringing in biotechnology into the horticulture field. Similarly, IT revolution is affecting the development in the rural area. We have Tamil Nadu Women in Agriculture, which is one of the projects that has been started by Tamil Nadu government for uh, one of the latest techniques for agriculture in, the, in these areas. Similarly, you have the organic farming. Now, as we already talked about, because of the Great Revolution and the use of synthetic fertilizers, the economy was affected. So you have the organic farming that was up. Now organic farming really becomes very very important. You have the Paramparagrat Krishi Vikas Yojana that talks about using uh, organic manures, organic fertilizers and as a result it uh, affects the whole of the system. Similarly you have Sansad Adarsh Gram Yojana where you have the members of the parliament who are asked to adopt one of the villages, develop it as a model village by 2016 and two villages two more villages by 2019. So as a result, you have nearly 2,500 villages. Those would be developed by the members of parliament. So it's again a very good initiative that's being done. Now, what are the benefits of uh, organic farming? Organic farming brings in more nutritional value, requires more labor, the shelf life of the product decreases. So it's again pesticide free. You have, uh, it's more of environmentally sustainable. Uh, 
the idea is to bring awareness among the people about the technology uh, shorter shelf life as i said is one of the major limitations for organic farming so better preservation techniques should be required and uh, then you have the limited choice in the production for the seasonal crops that's there so those are some of the things that are taken into account then you have one of the ngos and the name of prakruti by kisan mehta it first suggested that cotton is one of the biggest users of the chemical fertilizer Uh, chemical pesticides and we must grow cotton organically so this was tested by the Ger german accredited agency which was known as agrico so those are some of the initiatives that have been taken up by various organizations for the development stay tuned for further updates in economics we will be bringing in more important topics for you before your exam so stay tuned have a great day ahead